Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Trinity 20 Confirmation Online. This week, we're going to continue talking about the third article of the Apostles' Creed, which is, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And then as we do the laundry list, last week we talked about the Holy Catholic Church. This week we're talking about the line that, or, or the example of the Holy Spirit that is the communion of saints. Um, as we go into this, another way of remembering how all this works together is if we are the Holy Catholic Church, you know, the idea that the church connects us with God and then again, the communion of saints reminds us of how it also connects us with one another, that the Holy Spirit, this isn't a, an individual thing between us and God. This isn't a thing that we just do on our own. It ties all three of us together. So that's how it goes. Um, yeah, so communion of saints. Nate? <laughs> all right, so communion of saints. When you think of communion, most you probably think of this, right? You know, the bread, the wine. We talk about taking communion and serving communion and first communion. But in the communion of saints, communion, communion means more. Right? It means something a little different. You think of words that, that are similar to communion, that kind of that start out with the same, kind of come from the same root, you know, community, communal, commune, communication communion, right? So if you think of communion, communion also means, if you were to look it up, it, it's a sharing together in something that people hold in common, right? It's people coming together, working together, talking, sharing ideas, right? Kind of a, a, common, a common goal, a common vision. That's communion. Now, it doesn't mean that everyone agrees on everything. It doesn't mean that the details, right, everyone has the same details. But it's that coming together with this common vision, working together, trying to, trying to take that vision and make it a reality. Right? That's, what, that's another way, communion is used. Now, you know, we talk about together. And obviously together means something different today than it did, you know, six months ago. Together is not about all being in the same building, being in the same room, right? Even being in the same city, right? But together means this kind of united, connected. Together in purpose. Together in purpose. Right? We've got that connection. Um, along with that, too, Nate talked last week about when he was talking about the church, the idea, and I know we covered this in your first communion classes, but if you remember that video clip, which I'll put in this again, um, although I don't know if it's really going to be that helpful because you haven't seen the whole movie, but that scene where they're passing the communion through the church and people that have passed away through the movie are suddenly part of taking communion. People who were, you know, at horrible odds with each other are all together. You know, all of that is a picture of the kind of communion we're talking about with communion of saints. This, this shared purpose of being the children of God and, and working in the world toward that reminds us that we're a part of this process that ties us to the people that have gone before and that ties us to the people that have come after. I brought my little, this is my show and tell picture. Um, everybody meet my grandpa. <laughs> my grandpa is reading a children's Bible with me um, because the communion of saints talks about how one generation passes on this common purpose, this common thread, this thing that holds us all together that we call the love of God and shares it throughout the generations. So, communion of the communion, right? Right. Now, the, you know, when we, can, when we get confirmed, right, you're going to make a promise. You're going to promise to work for peace and justice through all the world. All right? 
And one of the ways that we're going to work for peace and justice through all the world is through this communion of saints. And so you might be thinking, saints? Yeah. <laughs> When was the last time I looked in the mirror? I know I'm not a saint, you know, uh, but this is one of the coolest parts of our roots as followers of Jesus who happen also to kind of take the name of Martin Luther because Martin Luther used to love to talk about the fact that when we talk about the communion of saints, we're the saints. You know, for all of our warts on any given day, in any given moment, we can either be working toward love and hope and life, or we can be selfish and working toward getting whatever we get and not caring about anybody else. Um, saint, sinner at the same time. Uh-oh, I was going to show my little saint, sinner uh word that you can see the same word and depending on how you read it and flip it i will try to include that picture somehow so you have it i'm hoping you mostly have seen it but when we're talking about saints what really came to mind was a story that we tell all the time you know that that shows that you know saints are us even though we are fallible we also have the chance to do things that can with God's help that can change the world. And so my favorite story about the saints and who they are is the idea that, you know, there was, there's a, it's a story that goes from a church thing. So there's a you know, children's sermon and a pastor asks the little kids, so who are the saints? And, you know, they come up with all kinds of, you know, things like St. Valentine's because of St. Valentine's Day or, you know, the things that, that you might think of first. But one, one young person in that children's message had been on a tour with their mom of the different churches when they, they had done a trip to Europe. And so this little kid, you know, six, five or six, you know, said, oh, I know who the saints are. The saints are the ones that the light shines through. That means, okay, he was obviously referring to a picture. Oops, let me get it up there picture like this. This is a picture from our own sanctuary, back where the Created to Praise singers sit. But you see the windows, and then you see them clearly reflected almost more sharply on the piano that we use, the electric piano. And so they were thinking the saints are the ones in the stained glass windows that the light shines through. But that child was also absolutely correct, because we are at our most saintly. We are the best at being saints when God's light of love, hope, all those things, forgiveness, all those things that the world needs, when that shines through our lives into the world and to the people that we touch, that's when we're acting like the saints. Well, so if every saint is a sinner, every sinner is a saint, mm -hmm. then I don't have to worry about anything, right? Because I'm a saint. You're going to work on being more saintly more often. <laughs> That's the call. <laughs> yeah, the, it's, you know, it's the same thing when we talk about forgiveness, right? You know, it's, yes, there's grace, and yes, we're forgiven, and God always loves us, but that, but we're still called to try and be better, right? And to realize that we're not in this alone at all, which is another, another understanding of the, the communion of saints that the Bible uses. And I'm gonna show you the really disgusting picture now. It's called the body of Christ, right? So each one of us, the Bible says in several places, you know, uh, it, it tells us that we are the body of Christ in the world today. We are the hands and the feet but if you think about the body of Christ and looking at each other and ourselves, we recognize that we're all good at something. We're all, you know, we have talents, certain ways of looking at the world. We all have something to give, but not one of us is more important than the other. You might get sick of me talking here. If I've said it to you guys, I know I've said it a million times, you know, 
we all grow up and the world wants us to know, feel affirmed and tell us tells us how special we are and it's absolutely true each one of us is vitally special to god but not one of us is more special than all the other children of god you know we're all equally special and none of us we're like the body of christ we're like a hand or an eye or a, a arm or a knee you know the bible says an eye can't say to the hand because you're not an eye you're not important um we're all different but this idea of communion of saints means that we work together to bring god's hope and god's love into the world it means that even though we may not be best buddies even though we may not get along with each other we recognize that you know even the people we have a hard time with have something to offer they're you know they god loved jesus loved them enough to die for them too they bring something that needs to be used you know we don't have to be best buddies but we have to work together and we have to respect the fact that by ourselves we can't do it it's meant to be done together as the body of christ not just an individual hand running off or an individual mouth running off um we need to be working together well so if the communion of saints falls under that list of the holy spirit right so how does the holy spirit what does the holy spirit have to do with the communion of saints and so if the communion of saints is an illustration of the spirit at work in those moments where people come together and we've all seen them luckily every so often amidst all the other horrible stuff that we see on the news you'll see a story of you know somebody's you know somebody's car broke down and started on fire and all of a sudden all of these people who didn't know each other at all you know form this you know line to help the people that's the communion of saints at work that's the holy spirit that kind of the light goes on in your head in that emergency situation that says i got to do something about this and then it becomes so much more when all of a sudden other people around start doing the same thing you know i've seen babies you know they drop babies out of windows of houses that are on fire um, when you watch the doctors and the nurses or the people working with the COVID virus, you see, you know, people who are really kind of at the end of their ropes, but together they're helping keep things moving. Um, the well, spirit of work tells us that, that in spite of our differences, we can make a difference. Well, yeah, you know, we talk about the communion of saints, right? You know, and we talked about, you know, around the world, right, forward and backward in time. But if you think about what that means, so you've got someone who's 80 working alongside someone who's 18, right? You've got someone who, you know, people who speak different languages, different cultures, different experiences. Um, yet somehow, none of that, none of that matters. Somehow, all of that is set aside so that the people together, sharing together in something that the people hold in common. That's what the Holy Spirit, I think that's what the Holy Spirit does. Yep. And that's, it allows, and it allows for miracles to happen because of that. You know, whether it's the one person standing up to do the right thing and then a bunch of other people join, it's whatever, however you want it to be. But it's those moments when together we bring out the best in each other. That's the spirit at work in us and through us and in between us. So that's kind of it. I, I think communion of saints, that covers it. That covers it. So we invite you to watch the, uh, the film clips that you'll see underneath. A couple of them are funny. Um, some of them, like I said, you saw the one with the communion service uh, from the places in the heart you saw that during first communion 
Um, there's a reason, you know, we talked about this stuff then, but you all are in a very different place now, much older and certainly in a world that's in the middle of some big changes. And so being the communion of saints and working together has taken on a whole different aspect. Maybe that's the last thing that reminds us because part of the body of Christ was that idea that we all have to work together. We're all in this together. And if, you know, this, if this hand is hurting, you know, this head is, is feeling it and it affects the way the whole body's working. We're living in a time where you see with this highly contagious disease that none of us are off by ourselves. You know, what, even though we feel isolated, the whole reason for all this is because if it affects one person, it can really quickly start affecting all different kinds of people. And obviously, since we're all sheltering at home, it affects all of us, whether we're sick or not. So um, that's, I suppose, a, a real world example of how we really are all connected, even when we try to pretend we're not. So, that being said, that's it. All right. Have a great week. Next week, we talk about a big topic forgiveness, the forgiveness of sins. Um, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, enjoy the sunshine. Remember to say Happy Mother's Day to your mom. <laughs> and, you know, I know, I know that you've got questions about forgiveness of sins, right? <laughs> so, come on, take, take a few seconds, send us a, send us a text, send us a question. Yep, All we right? would love to see it. I'll, I'll be sure there's candy on the, on the flip side of all this then. All right. Thanks, you guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye now. Thank <laughs> you.